Hello, and welcome to today's webinar, The Real Value of Oracle Health Checks, brought to you by DataVail. My name is Melanie Brady, and on behalf of IOUG headquarters, I would like to thank you for joining us. Our speaker today is Megan Elphingstone, Senior Oracle DBA at DataVail. Before we begin, I would like to remind the audience to please feel free to submit questions throughout the event via the question chat box on your webinar toolbar. Megan will leave some time at the very end of the presentation to address these. And at this time, I would like to turn over the call to today's presenter. Please go ahead, Megan. Hello and welcome. My name is Megan Elfingstone and I work for Dataville Corporation. This webinar is called The Real Value of Oracle Database Health Checks. I've been a DBA for over 10 years with many more years in IT before that. Before Dataville, I worked for the University of Colorado and Level 3, a telecom company. I started off in IT when I was a temp employee and I was put in charge of impl implementing a new manufacturing software system that ran on an Oracle database. Regardless of my role over the years, my favorite part of the job is helping customers and users solve problems and implementing solutions that are automated, stable, and reliable. Today we will cover Oracle database health checks and I will talk to you about how assessments will help you help your environment will help keep your environment stable, help you stay ahead of problems before they start and prepare your database for upgrades. Here's my agenda for today. Why, why should I run a health check, also known as a database assessment? What should the assessment cover? What specific things should I be looking at? How often should I run a health check, and does it matter if my database is new or old, OLTP versus the warehouse, or a combo of both? Then I will talk about how to run a health check, because there are a lot of options out there. I'll cover four different health check methods. Some are free, some will cost you some money, some make sense to combine together. Lastly, I'll cover some of the results you will see and what you can do with that information. Why should you run a health check? The first thing that comes to mind is the obvious reason. You have a problem that you need to fix. Users may be complaining or maybe you've encountered a bug. You could be in a situation where you've entered an SR with Oracle and they have already asked you to run and upload the Aura check, which is one of the health checks I will talk about. Or maybe you are troubleshooting something on your own and you need info, more info on where to start with a problem. These are examples of reactive situations and those situations will always come up. It's good to already have a plan in place to deal with a crisis. Knowing how to run a health check will allow you to calmly work through your issue. But what if you could get ahead of that problem and nip it in the bud? Why should you run a health check on a stable system? This is how you prevent problems before they start. Or it can allow you to narrow down problems when they do come up to allow you to solve them faster. By running health checks as part of your regularly scheduled maintenance program, you'll be more familiar with your system and less surprised when a problem pops up. Has anyone ever come to you and said, it's slow? If you're a DBA, I'm sure the answer is yes. It's slow is the starting point for many a day of database research and tuning. Once you have narrowed down the it part of it's slow to a particular query, you can look at your health check for more information. If you have been running regularly running health checks with the results archived, it's nice to be able to look back and say, actually, that query has always been the one that consumes the most resources. It usually runs in the same amount of time. Maybe the problem lies elsewhere. Or maybe you can look and see that that query is now performing much worse than it ever has, and then look to stats for more information. Having the health check already in place helps you to know where to start and what to immediately rule out. Everyone has a horror story about a patch introducing a new bug, a fix introducing a new problem. But an attitude of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, can be taken too far. If you leave your system as is, with no changes forever, it will be out of date, open to security risks, and unsupported before you know it. There may, be trouble, there may also be trouble brewing that you won't know about until it becomes a crisis. Being proactive will not be something you regret. You don't know what you don't know. What does that mean? It means that there may be big or small systems and problems in your system that you don't know about unless you look for them specifically. You may have a tiny setup problem that affects one system. For example, your control file isn't multiplexed. Maybe in 9 out of 10 production systems, everything is fine, but for some reason one database was set up with control files on the same disk. It's better to get that information from a report than to learn about it during an outage you try to do a restore. 
Another example is a system where there were duplicate data file names on demand points. This is not going to cause a problem while the database remains on that same server, but if there was a database move, it could bite you. What else could be lurking out there waiting to cause problems that would be a quick, easy, and relaxing fix that you could schedule at your leisure? Or maybe you will learn about something that isn't a quick fix, but for which you can at least create a workaround to address. A health check will let you know. In many cases, it will also offer suggestions or recommendations for solving your problems. Depending on how your office politics and communications work, you may think everything is running fine, but there are problems that you aren't he hearing about. A script will give you some of that info, but a data bill health check will also involve talking to stakeholders and getting the whole picture. Alternately, users may be complaining, but a health check may give your database a clean bill of health and allow your organization to focus resources on the real cause of the problem. A health check before and after an upgrade, or better yet, during the upgrade testing as well, will give you a baseline and help you troubleshoot issues or allow you to quantify improvements gained through the upgrade process. Unusable indexes and invalid objects need to be resolved before an upgrade. Regular health checks allow you to reduce the time that goes into an upgrade because these items have been addressed as part of your regular database work and maintenance. Catching problems as they happen and not allowing them to pile up until the next upgrade or migration will save you time and money on your next upgrade. Are you thinking about migrating data to the cloud? Database assessments are highly recommended before any major data migrations. If you are parking your data in a data warehouse or migrating it to the cloud or pursuing a migration in combination with an upgrade, a database assessment should be performed before and after and per performance results should be tracked. Best case scenario, everything in your database is considered fine or acceptable, but you find a way to make things better or faster. Why not be the hero? What happens if I never run a health check? You may experience a database outage or have trouble accessing the database during peak times. You may experience long delays and other difficulties logging in or with dashboard refreshes or updates. You may not be able to refresh or recover your database or have difficulty performing backups. You may hear frequent complaints from database users or lose transactions. You could be fined for failure to properly comply with corporate or government backup and security requirements or you may experience forced software upgrades on the spot rather than planning in advance. All these problems could also happen if you are running health checks, but you reduce your risk and are better prepared for anything that may come up. Think of it as getting an oil car every 3,000 miles instead of driving your car until it stops working and then reading the manual to figure out what could be wrong. Okay, what should I look for in an Oracle health check? First, we will look at the size and space and version information. We'll look at the size of your SGA. Running health checks for all your databases may show that you thought everything was standard, but one system was configured differently. This may account for performance differences. Object size. You may find that one table space is disproportionately large and that by breaking it into smaller table spaces, you could do a refresh or restore faster. We'll look at the size of the database, space utilization, file systems, you want to know if you're about to run out of space. This may see duplicate data file names, or we have also seen files with double extensions, like .dbf, .dbf, probably from using a GUI to create data files or a copy-paste error. We'll check to see if you have adequate space for backups. We'll look at CPU, disk, and memory utilization. Are you over or underutilized? Do you need to move to a more powerful server, or could you stack a couple more databases on that one server? We'll look at table space critical and warning threshold levels. You can reduce noise by setting alerts higher at the level where you would actually respond, or get alerted sooner to give you time to provision new space. Is your recycle bin properly configured? You may have years of data in there taking up space. Moving on to the system, we will also look at database components, backup tests, recovery tests, are your backups running and have you tested your restores? And are you on a supported version of Oracle? And has it been patched? Looking for performance issues is the last thing on the list here. A lot of information will show on many health checks and I'll talk about how to narrow that down to actionable tasks. 
However, knowing what your top queries are is also useful, just knowing that information. Even if you aren't about to fix anything, it's important to know what the heavy hitters are in your database. How are your stats being generated? Outdated methods can cause performance issues. Do you have issues related to collecting stats? Are some tables being skipped? Why? Do you have unusable indexes and invalid objects? These should be cleaned up. Are table space auto-extendable data files used? used? Separate mount points can address. Using non-auto-extendable files can cause the database to stop if you haven't addressed the table space, space issue before it runs out. What about top buffer gets, reads, and lag times, and I.O. file system? As I was saying, auto-extendable data files can help with I.O. issues. Allowing one file to grow until it reaches capacity and then adding a new file reduces your ability to spread out the I.O. Having more than one auto-extendable file can spread out the I.O. We'll look at block change tracking. Enabling this can speed up your ba backups and make them smaller. What about weight statistics through the database? What is slow, where, and why? Are you taking advantage of flashback? Having flashback database on can be a lifesaver if, if there is a problem. You may think you have it configured everywhere, but there's that one database that it's not turned on. Logging operations. If no logging is turned on for certain tables, then your backup or standby can have corruption issues in a restore. We'll look at corrupt log files. They can affect your ability to restore or fail over to a standby. IO stats, top reads, top writes. What are the queries that take up the most resources? And redo logs. Are they multiplexed? How often are they switching? As your database grows, your redo logs need to grow also. This is something that's easy to find. What security issues should I look at? We'll do an analysis of user accounts. Do users share access to an application username and password? If you have dormant accounts, they can present security risks. Are your privileges properly assigned? And we also look at grants on system tables. So when should I run a health check? Datavail recommends monthly for high stress, high turnover, agile environments, quarterly for a growing user base generating an increasing amount of data, and twice a year for non-growing steady state user, da user databases. But this is also up to you. How often are you going to look at it? If you run it too often, does it just become noise that you ignore? I think the above recommendations are pretty good. If I had a database where I looked at an in-depth health check once a month, I would be in good shape. Now I will talk about how to run a health check. I'm going to cover four methods, Aura Check, Oracle Health Monitor, Toad, and partnering with a company like Databill to help you run and interpret your health check. To start using OraCheck, I recommend reading the documentation called OraCheck and OraCheck Users or ExaCheck Users Guide. This health check comes installed with 12C under the Oracle Home Subtools OraCheck, which I love because downloading a health check in the midst of a crisis consumes precious moments that could be used for problem solving. Of course, after this webinar, you'll be so proactive with your health checks that maybe you'll avoid this example problem altogether. Although when you do run OraCheck, you may be notified that it's out of date and be prompted to run the latest version, which can always be found under the Oracle note I have listed on the slide, which I don't have listed. It's 1268927.2, and that's also in the documentation. This recommended way to set up this health check, the recommended way to set up this health check to run is as root user. If that doesn't work for you and your security team, you have the option to run it as Oracle. The script can either skip the root part of the health check, or you can configure sudo for Oracle to have access to the root portions. Frequently, Oracle will ask that this be run as an SR, as part of an SR, so it's good to know how to do it. It can be run on demand at the command line, or by setting it up to, setting it up to run periodically as a background process or via cron. And you can configure the frequency and have it email the results or store them in a file. The OraCheck results come in the form of an HTML file, which has a health check score at the top and the table of contents for easy navigation. As you can see, my test database got an 88%, which is a B+. I've always been an A student, so I need to fix a few things. 
I screenshotted my Aura check results as it was running to fit more in the slide. Here are some examples of the you don't know what you don't know example. Here are some you don't know what you don't know examples. My readers are not multiplexed. That's an easy fix. OS Watcher isn't running. I should set that up for easier troubleshooting. My redo logs aren't switching often enough or are switching too often. I need to look into that. Then they mention that I'm not on rack and that I can ignore. I don't have flashback database set up and that is a big fail. That would be one of the first things I fix after multiplexing the redo logs. The next health check method that I'm going to talk about is health monitor, which is included in version 11 onward. Health Monitor is, a more, is more of a reactive way to troubleshoot problems or to investigate issues that show up on one of your proactive health checks. The methods for running Health Monitor are reactive, meaning it runs automatically in response to an error, or manual. You can run a health, check mon health Monitor check yourself to research a problem. Health Monitor can be run in DB Online mode, which means all health checks can be run, or it can be run in DB Offline mode. In offline mode, the database would be in a no-mount state. Only the redo integrity check and the DB structure in integrity check can be run in DB offline mode. Health check monitor checks the following. DB structure integrity checks verify the integrity of the database files and reports failures if these files are inaccessible, corrupt, or inconsistent. The database block integrity check detects disk image block corruptions. The redo integrity check scans redo logs and archive logs and reports corruption. Undo segment integrity check uses SMON and PMON to try to recover <coughs> transactions after locating an undo corruption. The transaction integrity check is identical to the undo segment integrity check except that it checks only one specific transaction. Lastly, the dictionary integrity check examines the integrity of core dictionary objects. Okay, so how do you run the health check? There are a couple different methods. To manually run the health check, you can do it one of two ways. You can use the DBMS HM PL SQL pack package, which you can see on the or you can run it through Advisor Central and OEM. To run a health monitor checker using o Enterprise Manager, go to Advisor Central and click on the check click on checkers to view the checkers subpage. Once a report has been run, you can view it to see the findings, recommendations, and other information. To view the reports, you can get the same get the info through Enterprise Manager, through the ADRCI utility, or via that same DBMS HM PL SQL package. Instead of requesting checker reports, you can view the results of a specific checker by directly querying the ADR data from which the reports are created. This data is available through these views, V$ HM Run, which has a list of the runs, V$ HM Findings, which shows the results from the check, and HM Recommendations, which is what you should do to fix your problems. If you're a big fan of Toad and have a DB admin module, you can run a health check from within Toad. The DB module health check allows you to execute a nearly 300 point inspection across multiple virtualized databases with categories that include vulnerability assessment, configuration, including Oracle Rack and usage of Oracle options, OEM management packs and exit data, as well as performance. Lastly, consider partnering with Datavail or a similar company for your health check. There are many who work with a service like Datavail. Maybe your DBAs are constantly fighting fires and don't have the time to be proactive. Maybe there is an if it ain't broke, don't fix it attitude somewhere in your organization that is hard to overcome because someone isn't seeing the advantages of being proactive. Personally, my husband gives me mountain, mountain biking advice for free all the time, but I it makes a lot more sense coming from an expert at a bike clinic. I'm not proud of it, but the expert at the clinic has a way of phrasing things that make a lot more sense, and only when I hear it from that person does everything my husband has been saying make sense. Maybe you are an expert, and you've been racking your brain to figure something out, but all it takes is a fresh set of eyes. I have worked on teams where I was the expert, so when I didn't know something, I only had Google and Metalink to turn to. At Datavail, it's nice for me as a DBA to be able to reach out to a huge team of people who may have just solved my exact problem the day before. The advantage of Datavail are that Datavail has hundreds of DBAs with shared knowledge. We have a proprietary assessment tool that reports on a series of 72 tests of database capacity, speed, resilience, flexibility, and security. 
The DataVail Health Check Report is easy to read and understand. DataVail can access database health as well as provide solutions to issues. Your DBAs may be too busy fighting fires to be proactive. DataVail, DataVail can help. No matter how you run your health checks, once it completes, you need to figure out how to interpret the results and figure out solutions. What are some things you may see? I've already talked about a few of these throughout the presentation, but I'll cover a few more. Corrupt log files can lead to a standby failure when you need it. You may discover no logging operations are running on your database, which can result in unavailability or unrecoverability or problems with the database refresh. You may learn that you are so far behind on patches that you'll be forced into an upgrade as a solution from Oracle. When you create an SR, what is the first thing they ask? Your version. If you are several patches behind or on an unsupported version, Oracle will tell you to get back to them after you upgrade. Failed RMAN backups may put you out of corporate compliance. A health check is a good time to find out what is required by your company and see if it is in line with what you are doing. You may be doing nightly backups, but what if you have to recover to within an hour? Are your archive logs being backed up frequently throughout the day? Are you overdoing it on non-prod backups? Where you were doing nightly backups in non-prod, can you get away weekly or every other day? How much space do you have in your table spaces, and how much do you have available to provision to ASM? You could run out of space if your monitoring isn't configured correctly. If you find that you have users with DBA, DBA privileges, you have security risks. A health check will give you a list of those users to work through. Many applications require DBA privs when you do the install, but now it's time to examine if that is really necessary. If you have many hundreds or thousands of locked users, those should be deleted. If your recycle bin is full of old data, you should create a script to empty it periodically. At first glance, these health checks may seem to be more of an overall health check, but there are many things that they, many things that they cover that address performance. Looking for unbalanced reads and writes across file systems, ASM, ASM disks that are not uniform in size, sorry. How are stats gathered? You could be using the latest method. If you have a custom script, you could be using you could you should test using BMS stats with options to match your script. Are there objects without stats? Gather stats on all objects unless there is a good reason not to. If you are happy with the stats on a partition or a table, then go ahead and lock the stats. How often are your redo logs switching? Your goal should be two to three times per hour. Looking for unbalanced reads and writes across file systems. Use auto-extendable data files across mount points. Make sure your ASM disks are all the same size. Look at your SQL, SQL by CPU time, elapsed time, and reads, then dig deeper into the worst offenders. Are there unstable plans? This can be addressed easily if you're on Enterprise Edition with a diagnostics pack. Here's a copy of an example from the health check that we did at DataVail. We saw some high number of plans for unstable sometimes running very quickly, sometimes taking forever to run. In this example, the query we are looking at took 0 .004 seconds to run some of the time and 314 seconds to run at other times. The cause of this could be statistics generation, data distribution, use of literals in the query, or conditions in the where clause. We would have to look into it further, but if we could figure out the reason for the plan instability and reduce the runtime from five minutes to a fraction of a second, it would be worth the effort. I hope I've convinced you today about the value of running health checks, whether your system is performing well or not, as well as giving you some info on how and when to run them and what to do with that info. Thank you for your time today. Does anyone have any questions? Megan, thanks so much for the great presentation. We appreciate you joining us today to share insights and expertise. We did have a few questions come through. The first one was, I'm on an unsupported version. Can I run any of these? Okay, let me see. Uh, the DataVail Health Check can be run on any version with a little tweaking to the script. I know I run it on a version 9 database. I don't know about 8, but I think it would work on that also. Health Monitor is available starting in 11, and OrCheck can be run on version 10 onward. 
Great, thank you. The next question we had, I can't upgrade or change anything about hardware. Why should I run a health tech? Um, <clears throat> at DataVail, we have never run a health check and not identified a potential issue. Um, redo log uh, sizing is one that comes up, not increasing the size of your redo log as time goes on. Um, another example is that you may not be aware of no logging operations. That actually, I ran into that where the developers created a table and it was no logging. And when I went to do or um, try to create a copy of it for test, the restore failed because of the no logging. Um, so even if you can't change anything about your hardware or your version, um, it's good to rule out any other problems that could come up. It's especially important if you're on an unsupported version because you really don't want it to break. Great, thanks. The next question we had, this seems to be an overall health check. I need something that is more performance oriented. What addresses performance in this health check? Um, uh, frequency of redo log switching, statistics collection, objects without stats, looking for unbalanced reads and writes across file systems, ASM disks that are not uniform in size, and then just looking at the CPU, SQL by CPU time, elapsed time and reads. So lots of different things are going to affect the um, performance. Wonderful, thank you. The next question that came through, why is checking the last backup time for data files important? Uh, first, it's important to make the database, make sure the database is being backed up. Second, you need to ensure that your backup strategy meets your company's goals and requirements. And it's also critical to get backups tested at least once a year. The test should include a full alternate host restore along with an application of a full day of archive logs. People are often surprised by the duration that it takes to apply the archive logs, so you want to prepare for that. Wonderful. Thanks so much. The next question, what platforms can these be run on? Um, OrCheck runs on Linux, Solaris, AIX, HPUX, Windows. Um, it's written in Bash and requires it or higher to be installed, which is not included with AIX or HPUX, but it can be downloaded. The health check monitor comes with your database starting in 11, so I'm pretty sure it can be run against any platform. The DataVail health, che DataVail health check can be run on Unix or Windows, and it runs as a CBA, but we can change that if your security um, team has a problem with that. Wonderful, thank you. We did have a few more questions come through while we were handling those. The first one, does it check in parameters and make recommendations? Does it check into parameters and make recommendations on that as well? Um, definitely the um, Aura check does. Uh, I don't know about DataVail, but I assume assume it does, but I would have to get back to you on that one. Um, the health monitor isn't going to look at that. That's going to be more like critical issues. But or check, I'm pretty sure, checks on init parameters. Because I'm pretty sure on my example that I ran on base, it told me I had some non-standard init parameters that I needed to change. Great. Thanks so much. Another question we had come through, what was the document number you mentioned in the presentation? Okay, sorry about that. I was, thought I had it on the slide, but it's 126-8927.2. And if you Google the Aura Check User's Guide, you can find it from there, too. Thank you. And for that specific question, if you'd like to follow up with us at speakers at iog.org, we can grab that information from Megan and pass it along to you. The next question, um, is there a trail version we can download to review? I, res I assume there is a license. Um, uh, on this, I'm assuming you mean, well, for OraCheck and um, Health Monitor, those are included with Oracle, so if you have an Oracle license, you would have access to that. Um, I don't know about DataVail, I'm assuming you'd have to work with us to, to try our script. Uh, for Toad, you'd need, you, you could probably get a, um, 30-day trial for Toad and then run it with um, 
as the trial. Perfect, thank you. And again, for that specific question, feel free to reach out to us directly at speakers at IOUG.org, and we can connect you with Megan, that way we can get you more information on that. Um, the last question that we had come through, when is a good time to run the health checks? Is it during the low activity periods, like hours off? Um, if you're concerned about performance, then yes, I would run it during the off hours. Um, the Oracle documentation on AuraCheck says it's lightweight and non-intrusive, and the same goes for the or Dataville Health Check. So it didn't, if you're really trying to resolve a crisis, running the health check during the crisis is probably going to be fine. Um, you may also see if you're looking at your, if you have a lot of high turnover in your SQL, um, that might be the time to run it. But if you have, if you're super worried about it, then run it during off hours. You can schedule it um, so that it doesn't cause any problems. Excellent. Thank you, Megan. And as mentioned previously, if you have additional questions or any follow-up questions that come to mind at the conclusion of this, feel free to reach out to us directly at speakers at IOUG.org, and we can connect you with Megan and the Datavail team. Megan, any closing thoughts before we wrap up today? Um, just thanks, everyone, for your time, and feel free to reach out with questions. Thanks for listening. Great, thank you so much. And that concludes today's webcast. I'd like to give a big thank you to Megan, our speaker today, and the entire Datavail team. Before we conclude, please make note of our upcoming webinars and past webinars by visiting www.iog.org. A recording from today's webinar will soon be available on the IOUG website in our resource center. We also encourage you to save the date and register for the upcoming Collaborate 17 IOUG forum which will take place at the Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino from April 2nd to the 6th, 2017. There is a survey after this webinar for you to complete. We thank you in advance for your feedback. Again, we appreciate you attending today's webinar and have a great day.